Welcome to Shop Saber Minutes. I really wanted to take a little time to talk to you about the concept of expansion capable CNC routers. And let's go back and let's say you're getting ready to buy a CNC router. You kind of have to make a lot of decisions. One is with traditional router companies it seems you have to figure out what you may want to do with the machine two or three years down the road. And, and so maybe you say, well, I may need a boring block, so I better buy the machine with a boring block. I may need a fourth axis, so I buy all that. Or any of the other type of options that you can add. What those do is they make your machine cost more, okay? Now, if you need them down the road, that's fine. That was probably a good decision. But what if it turns out your business changes and you don't need them? Well, there's an impact. You got to remember, uh, everything impacts part cost. So if I cut a part with a machine that costs more because of those options, uh, that part costs more, so the actual true cost of that part's higher. So it's it's really kind of tricky uh, to figure out exactly what you, what the future is going to be. And so at Shop Saber CNC, we developed the concept of expansion capable machines, which which really let you add capability as your business grows. Let's say you need a new pickup truck. So you go down to the local dealer and you start looking at trucks. And, and of course, you have a budgetary amount in mind. And it's basically to buy a standard model. And you look across a lot and there's this beautiful four-wheel drive with big wheels and it's got leather and a big stereo system and power running boards and all the neat stuff. You say, man, that's what I really want. I'd look so good driving down the road in that. All right, so you're, you've got a dilemma here, all right? You either drive that really fancy truck home with a lot higher payment or you buy the basic model like you planned on, and every time you get in the thing, you, all you think about is how nice it would have been if I'd bought that nice truck. Wouldn't it be nice if I could start with the standard truck that I could afford, and I could upgrade along the way, and in, in the end, end up with a really nice truck, and it was exactly like what I looked at to start with? Well, let's apply that to the CNC router business. For as long as I've been in the CNC router business, I've always wanted the ability to be able to upgrade a machine after it's been installed out in the field. And um, so we challenged Shop Saber Engineering with that. And we said, okay, how, how, can, how can this work? So they came back to us and they said, well, the concept we would propose is called expansion capable CNCs. And here's basically how you have to start. First off, you've got to really look at the problem. Well, what's the worst case scenario? What could you add? Uh, to the machine that, that's a standard option that can be bought new on the machine. What's the worst case scenario? Well, it's always going to be dealing with the frame. So we started out, we said, well, really the boring block is probably the one that adds the most change. And so uh, we said, okay, well, how much does it need extra? Something that's really neat that came out of that. If you notice, for instance, if you look at the specifications on a Shop Saber IS408, you know, you say, okay, that, that machine's actually four foot by eight foot. Well, it's not. It's actually five feet. So if you actually look at the travel on a machine because of expansion capability, it's five feet wide. Well, the five feet wide compensates for the drill head there. So that gives you full coverage on the four by eight. And you know, there's a little something extra that gets kicked in there. And now all of a sudden, because that's 60 inches wide, I can actually cut a piece of five by five Baltic birch. So we really hadn't planned for that, but that's one of the offshoots of having that wider machine frame. So that's really how we started this whole concept of expansion capable CNC's. Let's look at a typical case study. Okay, you're a small cabinet shop, you decide it's time to go to CNC, and you buy either a Pro Series or an IS Series from Shop Saber, and it's got a 4x8 table. So that's where you start. And the machine's probably got a vacuum table, and it's got automatic tool changer, you're on a budget, so you only get five positions, uh, part locator pins would be real typical. So, so that's how you get started on the machine, and you're using Mosaic software to do the actual tool pathing and things are going really good. The cabinets you're building are better than you've ever built. The parts are square. You can use really complex joinery now so things fit nice. So things are pretty good, okay? One of your customers comes in and, and says, my wife really likes the MDF doors. Can we add that to this kitchen? And so you look into it and you find that, well, Mosaic already outputs the code for that, so there's no problem on that end. And then you look into the tools. You say, well, there's actually four tools I need. Uh, the most common MDF door, the one that actually looks the most like a raised panel door, is what they call a four-tool, five-path door. One of the tools is used twice. All right, so you buy the tool set and everything's fine and you're just swapping tools out. And so things are going good. And then the customer comes in and they said, boy, we really like those. 
Uh, you know, what we really want to do in the kitchen and dining room is have wainscoting. But we wanted MDF and we want that same design and we want, we're going to paint it just like we did the cabinets. And you said, can you do that? And I said, well, yeah, I can because I've, I've already got the tools and I can draw those tool paths in VCAR Pro. So, yeah, I can do that. But that starts becoming very popular. Another customer sees it and the next thing you know, you're making a lot of wainscoting. And one day you say, you know, it'd be a lot easier if I had more tool capacity because then I could leave all the cabinet tools and all the door tools on the machine at the same time. So you upgrade your machine by adding another five tool uh, position to the tool changer. So now your machine holds 10 tools. All right, so that goes really, really well. And you see what you did, you let business determine what you added to the machine and you added to it at the time you needed it. Well, you know, things are going really well. and. Uh, then one day a customer comes in and says, you know, you're doing our kitchen cabinets. Can you do closets also? And they say, you know, we, we want something that's really nice. We want something that kind of looks like a piece of furniture. Well, two things happen in your mind. You say, okay, well, okay, how do I make them look furniture great? And, and it's pretty much with carving and 3D stuff. Well, your machine has that capability. You know, on a on the Shop Saber CNC, if you have 12 inches under the gantry, you can you can machine something that tall because we actually add additional travel in Z so that you have whatever fits under the gantry, you can machine. So you say, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create these closet designs in mosaic and then, and then adorn them a little bit with some carvings. And then there's one other thing that I start thinking about. You know, one of the things that's kind of native about closet work is lots of holes. I mean, lots of them because you have all these adjustable shelves. So you decide it makes sense to buy the boring block and add that to your machine. The boring block, instead of drilling one hole at a time, lets you drill five at a time if you need to in either axis. So, so at that point you decide, okay, it makes sense because I'm doing more and more closets to add the boring block. So once again, you've let your business determine the options that you've added to your machine when you needed them. Okay, you know, things are going really good. One of the things you figure out once you start doing this adornment with carvings and stuff, that boy, it makes a lot of sense to also apply that to the kitchen cabinets, not just closets. So now all of a sudden, you're creating a higher quality cabinet and you find out two things. One is you can make a lot more money on the jobs and two is you don't have nearly as many competitors once you get into that. So one day you wake up and you say, yeah, this is going really good now. Boy, what if I can make carved posts and, and actually integrate that into the actual kitchen designs or the closet designs for that matter? So you add fourth axis capability to your machine. And that gives you the ability to make those carved posts. And, 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 and once again, it steps up the quality of what you can produce for the customer. All right, so that's going really good. And all of a sudden, a guy comes in with an antique gun stock. Out of the clear blue, you have no idea who he is. And he says, you know, I saw some of your work at, at this is Jones's Kitchen, and I, I'm really impressed. So I thought you might be the company that could help me. He says, I've got this antique gun stock, and boy, is there any way you can reproduce that? Well, you, you already realize because you have fourth axis capability that you have the ability to machine that, but you don't have the ability to reverse engineer it. So you say, okay, you know, yeah, I can do that. And you, you decide, well, I'm going to add the reverse engineering options. And th those are really two options. One is digitizing and one is actually laser scanning. So once you have that, now I can reverse engineer that actual stock and then produce it on my machine. Once again, those options have been added because my business dictates that. I'm not buying options just because I think I might need them. I'm adding to my machine as my business grows. Now your machine has all these capabilities and, and if you really think about it, the machine paid for those options. Okay, somebody comes into your shop holding a couple of unusual pieces of millwork and um, they tell you, we have a house, it's in a historic district that's 100 years old and one of the rules if you live there is any modifications that you make have to be in the style of the period. And so they're holding some parts up and they said, can you reproduce those? And you start looking and say, yeah, I can because I can reverse engineer that. I have scanning and everything and I can actually make that. So yeah, I can do those. And what that leads to is now, you know, there are other things that you can take those type styles and, and incorporate in new design. So it, it really opens things up. And the next thing you know, you've got two or three customers from that same district and, and now you're making custom millwork pieces. So you started out as a small cabinet shop and it, it just grown and grown and grown and grown. So, so that's really the whole concept of, of having a machine that you can expand the capability. So that's what this video has been about. This whole concept of expansion capable CNCs really changes things because 
prior to this idea, you basically had to either decide, okay, I'm going to I'm going to start on a budget and get a basic machine, or the other side, I've got to get something fully loaded, hoping that I need those options. And you know, you don't know what the future is going to bring. You don't know who's going to walk into your shop and say, can you do such and such. So this option basically lets you start with a basic machine and then add capability as the market demands it. So it's and if you think about it, the machine's paying for the options is, is really what's happening. So that's a really, really nice concept. Something else that you find out in, in our example, every time we added an option, we started tapping into a market we hadn't really thought about. So so it really expands almost geometrically. Now there's one thing that I would probably address here, and that has to do with machine speed. If you notice in our in our discussions, we talked about the Pro Series Shop Saver 48 or the IS Series Shop Saver. And, and the real difference is in machine speed and the incremental difference in base price from one is not that much. But what, the IS Series are faster. And, and when I say faster, they cut twice as fast and the acceleration is about three times as fast. Now, early on, that probably won't make a difference, but later it will because what happens is as we start doing more and more, speed makes a difference. So on the front end, if I make that small incremental cost adjustment, you know, what that's doing is that's buying time on the back end before I have to buy another machine for, because of, of capacity reasons. So I think I think that's why the faster machine probably makes sense on the front end. You know, we've got a saying here at ShopSaver, uh, buy your second machine first. And, and I think expansion capable CNC's really, really address that. You know, um, I hope you enjoyed the ShopSaver Minute. Uh, thank you.